Hi, welcome back to another installment of uh, how to do IT automation, uh, even if you don't do IT for a living. Uh, my name is Rich. I'm a content editor here at Better Cloud. And today we're going to talk about how to do uh, IT automation with Slack. And so um, there are three key use cases that um, you can uh, that you can automate uh, with Better Cloud and Slack. So um, you can um, create and populate a new Slack account. You can add new hires to Slack channels, and uh, you can clean up some of the pesky and unused Slack channels that are just creating clutter in your instance. Uh, we're going to walk through all three of them. Um, and if you joined us uh, for our um, IT automation with Zoom video, you'll remember that I tend to keep things pretty easy. Um, I, I create workflows that you likely would not uh, publish, um, but uh, I do think this is a good way to show you how easily you can add these actions uh, to any onboarding workflow that you've got in Better Cloud. So uh, I'm going to make my one condition that a new user cre is created in Google. Um, and uh, much like I did in the video on uh, Zoom in Better Cloud, I'm just going to say that we want this to to run whenever that um, that user is located in New York. Um, and then when we go into our then uh, conditions, um, I'm just going to create a user. Just like create a user. Um, choose our Slack integration, and then we can we can automate things like username creation. Um, so here I am, I would probably just go with, um, the username that we have in, in, in Google workspace. Um, we can also add that person's email. Um, we can also use this person's, uh, username as their nickname. Um, we have, if we have job titles saved, um, in workspace, we just select that there to to add to our, our user profile in Slack. And then um, once we add the person's first and last name, we're done. And you've automated user creation uh, in Slack. So uh, now to talk about um, adding people to those channels, um, I'm going to clear this out a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm also going to change my if condition to um, focus more on the user's department. So let's say um, we want to add um, anyone who joins the sales organization to a specific uh, set of, of channels in Slack automatically when, when they join. So you'll see that our, our when condition is that any, user, any new user is created, but now the if condition is that uh, the person's department is inside sales. So. Um, We'll go back into the then statements, and um, here we just say that we want to then add these users to to specific groups. So yeah, um, this um, you know I guess in this instance we would have we, we would have added the you know, this action would obviously be part of a bigger workflow. So the Slack user is going to exist, but I just wanted to show you from scratch, um, and then. Uh, from there, you just select the groups that you want um, all your salespeople to be added to on day one, and and that's that. So um, we're gonna wrap up today with um, some alerts um, to to let you know that um, maybe you've got some some unused uh, unused Slack channels that you might want to clean up. So. clicking in the wrong place here. So anyway, I'm going to go through my, um, I'm going to go through my Slack alerts and let's take a look at this empty public channels um, alert that we've got set up. So you'll see that we, um, we've, we've got this alert set up in our, um, in our environment to, to alert IT about any public, any, any public channels that have no members. So um, right now we have it set so that um, IT is going to get an alert every time this occurs. Um, you can also set this so that you know um, IT will you know IT gets an alert after say 30 times um, in which case you um, can use this alert to to trigger a workflow which I will show you in um, in our workflow template builder um, which is uh, really handy for um, 
archiving empty public channels. I, I went through and tried to build this on my own, and it turns out this is actually um, a much easier and more effective way to do this. So um, you can use that workflow, uh, sorry, that, uh, um, that alert to say, um, OK, assuming that we've changed uh, uh, the, uh, the threshold to 30, let's say. Um, we can build. We can use this workflow template builder to um, to archive these these empty public channels. So, um, we've got our triggering. Uh, our triggering event is the um, is the event or the empty public channels alert. Um, we have it sent to just one. So this would right now. Uh, this workflow would run uh, right now um, after the first time IT gets an alert. About a, about a public channel with no membership, but uh, again, you can go back and change that. Um, give better cloud um, uh, a couple of minutes to think about this. And then um, from here, you can configure your workflow. So um, here you'll see that uh, the uh, things like the Slack message that, um, that'll go out are already configured. Um, and uh, as as is sort of the uh, wait duration that we uh, that we can either leave alone or play with. So um, you can wait for seven days uh, after that um, after that initial sort of message goes out to the channel about being archived. Um, if you want to change it, obviously just come in here and type thirty if you want thirty, or however many days you want. Um, you would obviously want to go back to um, your Slack message and change that to match. Um, and then uh, once that wait. Uh, wait duration uh, transpires, then then the uh, Slack channel is going to get archived. So pretty easy. Again, um, I, I ripped through that in, in just a few minutes. And again, I don't do I don't do IT for a living. So um, that's that's one of the things that um, makes Better Cloud um, really easy for IT admins to use and also really flexible. So um, there will be a second part of this. Um, if you'd like to dive into what we talked about uh, today in more detail, feel free to uh, reach out to uh, your sales rep or one of our, our, our product experts. And uh, if you've made it this far, thanks. And I will talk to you in the next one.